so this evening I want to go out and do some Milky Way astrophotography and I intend to use the intervalometer that's built into the Nikon Z50 so that I can take a series of images um, in succession without having to keep pressing the button, the shutter release button to take an image each time. So to use the intervalometer, bizarrely the first thing you need to do and it's set right by default as soon as you switch the camera on but if you've done any other photography um, in the dark you've probably been using the self timer so you need to check that the self timer isn't on you need it on this single frame release so you can come out of there the other thing you need to do is go into the menu and find uh, long exposure noise reduction and make sure that that's off because if you take a 20 second exposure the camera then after that exposure takes another 20 second dark frame effectively so what it does is looking for noise and hot pixels within that exposure and then it um, takes them out of your image and that takes as long as the exposure it takes as long as the original exposure takes to do so if you take a 20 second exposure you've got 20 seconds of noise reduction to add to that and the whole point of using stack, stacking or the intervalometer to stack is that you can have a second between each exposure which means that you shouldn't get any star trailing or you're keeping the star trailing to a minimum because it's surprising how far the sky can move in 20 seconds and over 12 images that adds up to a lot so yeah long exposure noise reduction off and then we can go back down to the intervalometer Bang, into there, right, choose start day time, well it's going to be when you're doing it, so it's nice to know you can do it in the future, but you can do it there and then, so you don't need to do anything there. Uh, interval, I've got it set to one second, excuse my paint on my finger, um, one second, but you can have interval of minutes or hours, um, but one second is what we need for tonight. Um, Right, this is the number of shots that you're going to tell the camera to take. So I've got it set to 13. The reason I have it set to 13 is because uh, the first image, if there's any camera shake or movement, because you're not using the self-timer, you can discard that image and still have 12 images to stack for noise reduction later on. Uh, exposure smoothing I just leave off, silent photography is on so you haven't got shutter to introduce any vibration, uh, interval priority leave off and uh, just leave that because it will default to a normal storage folder on the card anyway and then to set that going you just press, come on that so that's the camera pre it prepares itself and then you'll know it's operating because this little green light shows you that it's taking exposures and then that's it so what that has done let's get that back there that will have taken 13 exposures at whatever settings you've told it to for in your manual shooting setup. So let's take that out into the field and do some uh, Milky Way shots. Well, it's an absolutely beautiful evening, another clear night. The good thing about tonight is there's going to be no moon lighting up the sky, so we don't have to worry about that rising through the uh, Milky Way core or blowing out the Milky Way with moonlight. Um, I've come to a spot called Durlston Country Park. It's near Swanage on the south coast. 
there's a couple of reasons I've come here. One, there's a massive stone globe, which I believe is made from um, rock that was mined in one of the quarries locally. Um, I'm not sure with the globe that it's the right orientation to get a Milky Way shot for this time of year. There's got to be a shot of this massive stone globe with some star trails or the Milky Way behind it, hopefully. So the Milky Way should be over in the south over there. And the other reason for coming out here is there's... Um, a lighthouse that I think might make quite an interesting shot. So this is Anvil Point Lighthouse in the background. Um, hopefully I can get high enough up there to get a shot from above looking out to see another absolutely beautiful place to be. It'll be dark but it'll still be beautiful in the dark. So according to photo pills, at about 1am tomorrow morning the Milky Way core should be over there so hopefully we can get it rising above the lighthouse at Anvil Point um, use the intervalometer to get 10 or 12 shots that I can stack together um, the reason why I probably do 10 or 12 shots is because this part of the world we've got about five or six international airports at least and it's hard to take a long exposure shot without having a streak of an aircraft passing through it. At least if you've got 10 or 12 shots, you can remove the streaks of aircraft from the shot and still have enough to stack to get a good level of noise reduction in a final image. So last week I was out on that point of land over there, which is Windspit Quarry. Um, and from there I could see this lighthouse over here, which I'd forgotten existed. Uh, but it gave me the idea to come here this week and shoot it if the uh, weather was good enough, which it is. I'm not sure what these are. I think they're irises, but they are absolutely beautiful. And there's a little clump of them just here. Absolutely beautiful. Right, there is a lighthouse behind me and this thing here with the funny square bits in it is actually a foghorn. Ha! Imagine living next to that. Might as well have a beer while I'm waiting. It's just about quarter past ten now. It's not going to be properly dark until about eleven so there's no point in starting taking any photos till then so I'll sit and enjoy this beer and the view. Cheers. Ah, oh, perfect. think I've got some really good photographs tonight um, the wind's starting to pick up now so that's a good result I find it absolutely mind-blowing that um, well pretty much the end of May May the 28th now so June the 21st is the longest day for us as the summer equinox um, and I find it absolutely mind blowing that Photo Pills is telling me that it's not properly dark until half past midnight. But by 1.30, well after 1.30 in the morning, the skies are already beginning to lighten. So you've only really got an hour of proper, as dark as it gets. And then you can push it and probably an hour either side of that. 
so realistically from 11 till probably half two uh, the darkest period so you got um, maybe well, about three hours ish really um, and then beyond half two ish in the morning um, you can already see the skies lighten I find that just mind blowing really um, kind of don't want to wish your life away but all, all winter you look forward to like the warm summer nights and Milky Way core season but that means being out until half three four o'clock in the morning for me and then you start wishing for winter again because you can get your astro photography done at kind of nine o'clock in the evening or even earlier than that because in the winter here it's dark by half four or five o'clock um, so yeah it's really hard not to uh, not to wish your life away always looking forward to something different you know but I've had a fantastic night uh, had a beer which has made me hungry so I'm going to go and get some junk food and see you later thanks for watching bye